Webhooks are an interesting part of the API universe, so to speak. They fill an important need, and in many cases you're wondering, how can I use Webhooks in the best way? And to talk with us about that today, here's Chris Wood. Hey, Chris, thanks for joining. Yeah, morning. All right. So you recently wrote an article about a new standard, which is called Standard Webhooks, which is a new document that came out that specifies or defines basically how to best use webhooks. I guess that's the way how you could put it. How would you characterize that standard? Yeah, um, so um, I think when we wrote that article on Nordic APIs, what we were aiming for is just to convey a, a couple of messages about how this specification um, helps people define their webhooks better. Um, number one is I, when I read it, I look at it and I think of friendly advice you know, that, that's one of the phrases I used in the, the article. It's kind of characterized by having an, um, an easy tone that maybe is easier to read than other specifications that you come across other standards. Um, it's definitely geared towards getting people to do um, webhooks in a, in a kind of consistent way um, without necessarily offering them a specification language. Um, to go away and define their web webhooks in. So it's kind of like a, describes a pattern, being able to um, take this document, implement your webhooks in whatever tools you like, um, but when you actually implement your message signing, how you format your payloads, um, the HTTP headers you send, um, you've got this document helping to guide you. Now this is, this is quite important because um, standards obviously help with interoperability and if you as a consumer of webhooks or as a provider of webhooks can um, engineer them in a really consistent way it reduces your time to market it reduces the overhead of creating webhooks and most importantly for people sending you um, information on webhooks or you providing webhooks you've got a consistent pattern for how to consume the data so really, I characterize it as kind of a mix of a specification, an implementation guide, and kind of friendly advice. I like I like friendly advice, in the way yeah. I say. but it, yeah, it's very true. I mean, from you know, I've seen the same thing where I mean, webhooks is mostly you could almost so it's 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 like an idea, right? It's not it's not a specific way of doing things. It's just this idea of using callbacks in a certain way. And there are a lot of answers you have to give when you wonder um, how to implement those. And it always felt like saying we do webhooks and then actually doing it, there was this kind of big gap in between where you have to think about all these questions. And at the very least, I think this specification will tell you all the things that you should be thinking about. Is, yeah. is that something that you took away yeah. from that as well? You right. know, even even if you answer them differently, but at least it asks all the right questions. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's kind of two parts to it. So, answering the questions of how how should I define my webhook, it definitely helps you with that. Um, but it also provides some sort of specifics around, um, as well as implementing a webhook. You know, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, like I said, about the message signing and the formatting and what have you, this actually provides you some guidance on if you're going to provide webhooks or um, want to fire information at webhooks to another provider, um, this is a way to do it consistently. So, so it, it very much helps answer questions, but it also gives you recommendations about how to do it. Um, you know, they're loose recommendations use a JSON payload, um, it comes up with a, um, a, a mechanism to format the message. So that kind of looks like a JSON web token. Um, it certainly must take its, um, its heritage from that. Um, so this is kind of mixed between, you know, answer these questions, this is a good way of doing webhooks and some more specific technical details. And the specification is supported by a raft of uh, libraries, SDKs effectively, that you can use in order to to help you do the the, the signing and verification parts of the, the specification itself, you know, written in a range of languages, C-sharp, Java, Python, JavaScript, whatnot. So 
yeah, there's kind of this mixed approach. Again, going back to that thing about being friendly, it's kind of like I am less specific than my specification language like Open API or whatever. Um, but I can definitely help you get to the point where you're going to either consume a webhook and provide a webhook that's um, written according to the specification and I can make your life easier, which is good for everybody, really. Yeah. And I, so if, if we characterize this document as something where you would say, if you are using webhooks, at the very least, have a look at the document so that you know that you have answers to all these questions, even if you made different decisions. But it's, it's very easy to read. It's, it's not a very long document. So at the very least, I think it could be a little bit of a verification thing maybe for you as somebody who's using webhooks. And if, you're, if you still have to answer these questions, then, well, here are some answers and maybe just pick those. Is, yeah. Would that be? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's uh, that characterizes it well. Like, like I say, there are there are um, there are technical specifications inside it, uh, the formatting of the payload, so on and so forth, that um, that you can adhere to. Uh, you don't necessarily need to, uh, but this this provides a way to do these things consistently. So, and, and that can only be a good thing because consistency across different implementations as it again makes life easier for people. If you define web hooks you're gonna to provide um, to your customers, then doing each one the same can only be a good thing. If you're gonna define web hooks you're gonna ask your customers to implement, then using this in order to make sure the payload's consistent, whether you're sending and receiving can only be a good thing. Um, so there's definitely, as well as answering the questions, there's definitely enough there to get your technical implementation uh, consistent between providing web hooks and consuming web hooks within whatever ecosystem you're working in. Okay, so I think that's that's a very good summary of what this what the document does. So if you are using web hooks, check out the the standard web hooks specification. Um, maybe you're all fine, but maybe there are some things in there. So so for example the. Last thing, right, which I found interesting, they even have a specific recommendation for the retry periods, you know, like how in, in which intervals you should and you should get like a little bit longer for the retries and these kinds of things, right? So so just a lot of good implementation advice, yeah. I would say. Yeah. I mean, you you know, the the fact of the matter is is that this probably isn't going to to rule your world in terms of how you provide or consume web hooks. You know, at some point you want to use a specification language to express the payload schematically, so the actual data you're sending, you're probably going to want to use Open API or whatever in order to um, define that thing, or just bare JSON schema. Um, you're going to actually write need to write some instructions for people in order to say, in order to implement your webhook, please follow these guides that are specific to my industry. You know, if you were in financial services, you'd probably set some values in the 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 data you're sending that stops things like message replay and stuff like that. So it's this is what I'd say a really good starting point. But like anything, you need other tools and other means of communication with real human beings in order to um, fully implement your webhooks. It won't do it all for you, but it is a very good starting point. And as I said, a way of getting real consistency around your implementation. So. Okay, great. So check it out, everybody, if you're interested in webhooks. And thanks a lot for joining, Chris. Pleasure. Yeah, thanks everybody for watching. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up, consider subscribing. And um, until next time, keep getting APIs to work. Bye, everybody.